Okay, so uh, so I'm back again. Um, I hope. Uh, could I have uh, a comment from anyone that was, might be watching to to say whether you can hear me and see me? Okay, that'd be very much appreciated. Thank you very much. So I'll just wait a second, see if there's anyone there. Good. So there's some people joining. Okay. So let me know if you can hear me. Okay. Give me. Uh, just give me a, a, a sort of a like or something or a thumbs up. Good. Okay. Thank you, Kishori. That's good to know. So, uh, yes, we'll get started. <laughs> yes. Uh, technology, eh? Um, I'm still trying to work it out. I, I kind of want to um, be able to take this work um, to the world through the internet. It seems to be the way to go. And... Um, Finding the technology to do it uh, seems to, uh, yes, you seem to. It seems to be not that poss not too possible on a home budget. So, if anyone's got any good recording equipment or camera equipment or um, broadcasting equipment, there's all sorts of tech stuff out there that I kind of need to make this work properly. If you've got anything like that, uh, or you know anyone who might have something like that, uh, send them my way because I kind of <laughs> I could do with some help. Um, let's put the lens on so you can see better, and I might turn the brightness up, so if that makes anything broader. Okay, so uh, let's get the brightness going. Have we got that going? Where is it? Where's the camera? There it is. Okay, one second. A bit more brightness. That should do. A bit less contrast. There we go. I think that should be okay. Okay, right, good. <laughs> okay, so off we go. Um, the um, the questions I had were around hips and around foot massage. So the foot massage was for, I can't remember her name now, but uh, she put in a request. So I think we'll start with that. It's a simple thing to do, and um, anyone can do it. And you can do it whilst you don't have to be sitting on the floor in, in half lotus or anything. Um, you can you can be on a chair, um, just somewhere where you can access a foot. So, um, so here's a here's a guided foot massage. Let's, let's organise this so you can see a bit better. I might even zoom in a bit. So, so foot massage. Um, if you can have, however you're sitting, if you can uh, approach the foot from underneath with the opposite hand and get a finger in between each of the toes, okay, that, that will be how we, we sort of open out the foot. Okay? In order to get there, um, many people will need to find a, a way of loosening up the tissue in the first place. So. What I suggest you do is you start by actually putting the bones together. So there's a sort of a, a holding together feeling where you take all of these bones and squeeze them a bit closer together. And the closeness, uh, the putting them together allows the tissue between the bones to soften. That's the way it works. Um, and if you can, yes, if you can, Let's do that a few times. Uh, for the, I remember the the question was from someone that had an interest in, in in heels. So if you can get a sense of how the tissue can soften by by um, putting the feet together laterally, um, you can also get a sense of how putting the heel on. So taking hold of the heel from the corner and sort of pushing it into the foot means that you can start to loosen it up. You see. Um, and as it loosens up, you can move it around. And it's quite good to sort of, um, it's quite good to treat the heel bone as separate from the rest of the foot. So if you sort of turn it in opposite directions, it can help give you space in your ankle and other things. Okay. Um, you might notice I'm not really doing anything to the tissue. It's more about the bones. And then uh, if, if you've put your bones together, you can um, 
thread the fingers from from underneath is the best sort of direction opposite hand and the job of the fingers is not really to stretch the toes although you may feel like that it's more it's more to do with um, again putting bones together so if I've got hold of the heel at the other end um, I'm, I am squeezing the foot, uh, but I'm not trying to sort of pull the toes apart too much, you know, any more than the fingers being there does. It, if you want to get freedom of movement, you want to put bones together. So I'm sort of, um, I'm sort of squeezing along the axis of the bones to put, um, to sort of put them together through their line of connection uh, through their joints and then if if you're holding the bones together you'll find that the tissue yields a little more as you twist and turn um, if it feels like it's loosening up you can just straightforward straightforwardly get your fingertips between the bones spaces between the bones and your thumb underneath in the space in the middle of the foot to dig around but it's it's more to play with the spaces rather than to stretch tissue. Although obviously tissue will feel stretched. Okay, so you do that for a minute or two with the heel and foot being sort of turned in opposite directions. With your thumbs and fingers digging into the spaces as you see fit. Um, you can get into uh, acute pressure points if you're interested in those sort of things um, the foot's very interesting it's a uh, yeah they're all, uh, there's lots of structures that you can sort of find the mirrors uh, in the body for and uh, the, the patterning of the foot um, very clearly relates to other parts of the body and it's, it's practical it's not just a, a, a map it's, um, it's how we use the foot which I'll get into in a minute when we're um, playing with the hip. Okay, so uh, the, this sort of organ, uh, moving around of the heel bone creates space away from the away from the um, ankle. So, so it's it's kind of um, I like to think of the heel bone as a as a kind of uh, like a heel cap, a foot cap, like a like a knee cap is a is a bone that is in front of the knee space the heel cap or sort of the ankle cap if you like is the heel bone and if you can think of it like that then you kind of understand what a foot is the foot is this part really and uh, if, you, if we were uh, animals still on that that would be the paw and this would be uh, that would be the hind leg part um, and you only really use it for for resting um, as humans, we have a very unusual um, evolutionary development that allows us to use the heels for ambulation, for walking. Uh, but um, let's, so let's do the other one. So um, squeezing the bones together. Yes, hit hit the likes if you're enjoying it. It's nice to see a few thumbs up um, floating across the screen. If you love it, you can hit a love button as well that's nice <laughs> uh, so squeezing the bones together to help the tissue release and then um, yeah you can turn things around you can sort of help things loosen up between the heel and the foot when something has loosened up you can feed your fingers through every single toe try not to miss any out and that, that's challenging for some people, but uh, if you go up to the knuckle um, and just, um, I don't know, be kind. You know, we're, we're not trying to pull the toes apart. We're just trying to support a little bit of space between the bones. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, a little bit of space between the bones. Um, so, and if you take hold of the foot and sort of squeeze it into itself through its bones, then the joints within the foot Will get become more mobile so it's a fundamental principle in yoga um well in my in in our yoga anyway in the aqua viva 
approach to things. Um, it's not uh, if something's stiff, um, stretching it does the opposite of what is needed. Um, usually, um, things are stiff because they're resisting movement for you know for a very good reason. They're, and quite often, especially with hips, by the way, um, the resistance is to stop the um, joint falling apart quite often. So the, the, the intention to stretch doesn't really do the job. But putting bones together, and if you can feel it in your foot, um, Tracy, you might you might uh, get a sense of how it works in your um, hip. You know, by putting the hip together, or putting the foot together, then the joints involved um, are less compromised by what you're doing. So they become more mobile, because they're not, they don't have to fight to hold themselves together. And uh, so the tissue uh, releases because of integration, because of putting together, not because of stretching. Um, and then, you know, when the tissue is released, by all means, you can dig in. You can get into those places and, and squeeze out whatever toxins have accumulated in the tension. Um, so, so that's what your fingers and thumb are for of the hand. Just to get into the spaces between as you turn. Good. And uh, that's in the heel is an ankle cap so you can understand the foot as this thing and then your touch becomes this thing the ball of the foot and little toe and that's kind of important to understand for the, for the next bit um not immediately but anyway let's uh, rejig this let's get the focus back to where it was and here we are Okay. So, as I was saying, uh, for hips, um, you, you gave me a bit of a clarification about what you meant by hips, um, Tracy. So thank you, thank you for that. Um, it's it was uh, there was a few layers to it, uh, but primarily it sounds like it's the hip joint itself that is complaining. So. Um, there may or may not be arthritis going on in there, arthritic sort of deterioration of some some description. Uh, it's not that a big deal, to be honest. I, I know it's um, arthritis can be something that really causes uh, that, that is associated with a lot of pain, and um, that is a fact for some people. For other people, the same stuff going on inside the joint uh, doesn't actually cause any pain and the, and the difference will be um, to do with function uh, so if you have an arthritic joint there will be a sort of tendency if, if the, the thing that happens basically is if the forces that travel through that joint um, kind of make the bone sort of jam nastily into the joint that's hard to hard to describe so that you know if that's a thigh bone if that's the femoral head which moves into the side of of, of the pelvis if this is a if this is the um, hip joint the socket of the pelvis then what generally happens for people when when they stretch or when they um, tuck their pelvises under or lift with their backs is a sort of a distortion of where the forces travel inside the joint and um, quite often it's the the thigh bone is pulled forwards with the groins and that creates a pressure that you have to then compensate for uh, because the forces traveling through the joint is kind of not really supporting you um, you have to compensate for it by holding away from it as well. So it's a whole area of tension is, is the result. Um, and a way to, um, yes, a way to relieve that is to relax. <laughs> but to relax in a position like this where um, you can externally support the thigh bone in its housing in the hip socket the femoral head coming around and into the joint so i'm not talking about the groin that's that's the front sort of part of the 
musculature and whatever that's going on in there. I'm talking about further back, closer to the sort of side of the sit bone almost. Um, that's the outside of it. And then the feeling of where that uh, anchors inwards. And the point is, even with arthritic sort of distortion going on in the surfaces of the joint, if you find the appropriate sort of direction which will probably be further back inside the joint, especially since you mentioned that the groin braces and there's someone else with a groin thing going on, I think. If you can support the thigh bone directly through the thigh bone, further back into the housing of the joint and not resist it on the inside, so you start to release tension in the belly, in the across the in the space between the thigh bone, or between the hip bones, um, you might be able to feel a kind of oiliness in the joint that allows you to make tiny little circling movements. And the movements themselves gives you an idea of where the joint is. It's not the same as feeling your hip. You, you feel your hip with um, resistance of the muscles around the hip. Um, let's make it a bit brighter in a second. Um, yeah, you feel your hip uh, from the muscles around the hip that would normally control movement or resist movement. So, you know, if you're doing it with hip muscles, then that's all you'll feel. But when you support the thigh bone externally, the weight of the leg externally, but guide forces through the axis of the bone, so you have to have an idea of direction, where that is, um, into where the joint is, it lives and as it sort of sits further back there should be the potential at least to not resist movement so your job is then to not resist movement and totally relax around that area and as you do that you can just make very slight circles and my suggestion is um, the direction would be up the middle so sort of across the middle up the middle out to the side and then away from you which um, on the left leg would be uh, um, that way, and on the right leg would be that way. Okay, so up the middle, out to the side, and away from you. And then normally I would just get you to experiment with what uh, works best for you, but as you, uh, the way you describe the thing, I, I'm suggesting this is probably the, uh, the best way of doing it. Um, the other ways are sort of kind of an avoidance, and that would cause more problems, okay? Um, I'm not saying it's wrong, it's just, it's, it's an option that is perfectly valid in some circumstances, but try up the middle, out to the side and away from you, with the idea of totally not resisting. <laughs> um, the effort in the arms might be quite a lot, because uh, you have to support, fully support the weight of the leg, so the leg can be totally released at the hip joint, you have to um, be working hard enough without tensing the belly muscles. So you have to allow that work through the thigh bone as a to feel like a sense of you supporting yourself. So the down through the thigh bone of the arms, the, the work, it should give you a sense of more space in the belly and the chest and the heart and that sort of thing. As you stir the hip up the middle, out to the side and away from you. Now, if you have groin um, strain, uh, then the up the middle bit will take time because well, I don't want you to rush past anything. If you feel a place where the tissue kind of resists, it can be partly habitual or it could be because of accuracy or lack of accuracy in the way you're supporting yourself. So, um, Pause if you feel a resistance. See if you can breathe and let go of the resistance. And when it softens, you'll know because you'll be able to move without causing any more pain. You know? And gradually, 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 you can uh, play with this until the range of movement increases. And at some point, the pelvic bones themselves will be sort of um, doing a cyclic. Uh, response to the thing and the main thing is to allow um, everything to feel individual so the thigh bone is circling in the hip joint 
if the pelvis joins in, it's not because the hip joint is fixed. If the pelvis joins in, it's because you're rolling around a little more expansively. But at the base of the spine is not fixed inside the pelvis. So because the pelvis can move around the sacroiliac joint, uh, uh, pivoting in the pubis. Um, so it's, it's to give the body permission to let go into movement. That's what you're doing by supporting it externally. And that should in principle relieve the pain even if you have arthritis going on and what's more if you do have arthritis and you can find a way of releasing tension around the joint as it is articulated then that will bring health to the joint itself now I'm not, I haven't really got time I might have to do this on a follow-up session um, I, I've got a tendency to give too much away if this relieves the pain, then that's plenty uh, for you to, to work with. The reason I wanted to include the foot massage is because I wanted a sensitivity in the foot. Because, because and I don't want you to necessarily try this right now because I haven't got time to take you through it. But the way you use the touch of the foot, which is basically the ball of the foot moving away from you with the toes expressing from that, the way you use the touch of the foot should be a point of support that moves back through the bones and anchors in from the side. And you mentioned that external rotation gives you uh, a bit of relief, uh, Tracy. Um, you don't have to be, the external rotation will allow the tissue around that space to release, but as will support through the hip joint. And it's from the side, you see. So if you can work out a way of using your foot that supports back through your hip to sort of put it together in the same way rather than it jamming up, then you'll find that you have much better range of movement uh, because the hip won't have to resist movement. It won't be you pushing against your hip. It won't be you pulling your hip away from the ground. But, but that sort of gentle exploration of using your foot to feel supported in a similar way to the way you use your hands will give your nervous system the wherewithal to how to take weight through this leg or whichever leg you're, you're needing to work with okay um, but uh, I would stick with the first part uh, the, the bit where you're just um, sort of taking care of the reactivity in the hip joint itself around the hip joint and all the rest of it first and that's what I deal with and um, through breathing, through the release of the breath, through kindness, that's essentially what we're doing. Being kind to ourselves. Um, the, the, if there is a, an arthritic sort of issue, it will have arisen because of um, a complicated relationship through that point. So the way you use your leg, the way the body sits on the hip, would have sort of caused um, a relationship that was difficult for the hip. And when, when the when a joint is given a difficulty, the body freezes around it to prevent movement. When there is a prevention of movement and the joint itself start, can start to deteriorate through an absence of function. But it's, it's, it's just the body being intelligent. If you're asking the hip to not move, it starts to grow stuff in there <laughs> that says we're not going to move. And uh, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's my take on one of the things, that, one of the reasons why the body might um, decide to become arthritic in an area through absence of function. So anyway, um, I hope that's helpful. I hope that gives you some something to do to help at least relieve the pain. The details of how to actually use your um, leg in a, in a similar fashion, um, it's a matter of precision and it's mostly how you use the foot. Uh, and then if you're used to pain around the hip, the hip activating in, in the opposite direction will be an unusual thing for you. So um, to, to be able to recognize what's useful and what's not, I, I think you can through um, whether you feel supported or not or whether uh, the hip has to restrict movement. But it kind of depends on, on um, your uh, reactivity to sensation that sort of thing if you want some help get in touch and i can guide you directly and if i can see you on on the screen i can help um, with specifics moment by moment and that's that's the nature of yoga really
It's um, a moment by moment, breath by breath, uh, ability to respond to what is. And it's that that leads to the natural healing, you see. So, uh, yeah, that'll do for today. Um, the technology threw me a bit, but I, I hope that was a useful session. Do let me know. We, we've What have we got coming up? Um, well, I, I'm, I'm going to be um, getting on on top of the website and make sure that um, all the future garden yoga events get listed so people can book for this, that and the other. Thinking of doing all sorts of things. I might, I'm thinking of doing a, um, a sort of a men's yoga week whilst Abigail does a women's yoga week and uh, coming together for lunch and <laughs> to compare notes maybe, I don't know. Uh, all sorts of ideas, uh, things we can do with our lovely um, home spaces and uh, that's kind of what they're for. Um, uh, yes, I don't want to put on regular, sort of, I don't want to put on weekly uh, normal commercial classes, but um, you know, happy to invite people into my home for special events. So there'll be stuff over the, over the summer for, in my garden and at Ab in Abigail's beautiful studio space in her home. And uh, what else? In, uh, we'll be in Reading in July uh, doing the World Yoga Festival. I've been invited to go and teach there and share my stuff. So it's, it sounds like a great event. Um, Abigail went last year and loved it. Um, uh, yes, other than that, I, I, yeah, just go on the website. Um, become a member. If you become a member to the website, the best of these um, Yoga Solutions Lives are, are um, compiled on a page for you, so you can just access them and scroll through and pick out the one that you want to work with, you know. Um, and also, if you're a member, then you'll get um, to hear about what's going on a little earlier than other people, and they might uh, we often sometimes offer discounts if uh, if uh, feels appropriate. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, well, yes. And if you're interested in joining one of the Aqua Viva uh, uh, Yoga Development courses, the next intake is September. Um, you need to be thinking about it now. Um, because 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 because. It's, uh, you know, the, you need to, uh, it, the, the dates, uh, you need to make sure you're available for the dates. We need to uh, get to talk to you and to see if uh, it's a good fit. We have very small groups, so there's very limited places. And um, whether it's down in Brighton here or up in Glasgow, um, it's good to get the process running early. And if you haven't worked in person with either myself or Abigail before, uh, that needs to happen before you join one of the courses. Now, uh, the, the September start is a full weekend series. Uh, we do rolling courses, rolling short courses that are CPDs, and you get certified for all the hours you've attended. Uh, but they can add up together, together with some um, extra work that Abigail does with you to create a teacher training course, um, 500 hours, and that's the minimum that we we will qualify people with because this work is so in depth. So um, lots of information there. That's probably probably enough. I shall say uh, I'm signing off now. I think that's time. I am Mark J Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. Um, signing off until the same time, same place next week. Lots of love to you all. Bye.